be going to see him soon. We ain't got that much time left. Who's the part of the game? What game are you talking about, Jack? Hey, I don't read a police file shit yet. Quit calling me Jack. It's just an expression, all right? I don't mean nothing by it. I don't give a damn. It happens to be my name. No, you complaining for this might call you shithead. I may call you worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Cyberline coming back to you with another film review. This time we are moving on to Forty Eight Hours. So with Forty Eight Hours, I think again this is like Beverly Hills Cop. I saw this movie probably like when I was. Uh, in elementary, maybe middle school. I think it was elementary. <laughs> you know, hey, it was there. And the film is pretty much about the great Nick Nolte and, of course, on fire, Eddie Murphy. And I think this was probably one of his first films, if I'm not mistaken. And it's about Eddie Murphy, who's a convict, and Nick Nolte, who's a cop. And they're trying to track down um, the great James Ramar. Uh, as the villain Gantz, uh, and pretty much it's a it's a buddy cop film. Even though they're not buddies per se, they don't they. Uh... <laughs> it they ain't you know. It... I guess this film is kind of like a. I never saw Starsky and Hutch like the show or most of the shows in the the seventies. But I felt like 48 Hours was kind of like a mocking of the, of that relationship because, woo, the uh, mm -mm -mm. language, language, it's the interaction of how they talk to each other, <laughs> the the environment, the common. Uh, Man, where do you go with this? Let's just put it this way. This film would not be released today. And the type of climate we have where you have to be politically correct and you can't say this and you can't say that, this film would not be released today. I'm surprised. Nobody has tried to come for Eddie Murphy with this film, you know? <laughs> or Nick Nolte, because, whoa, like, oh, uh, this is, oh, man. So the, the, but otherwise the film is great. It, it's entertaining. It has action. It has so much comedy. It also has a little bit of political, political, political commentary to it too, which was interesting. Just, just the overall mindset of uh, you getting the perspective of a cop, but you're getting the perspective of, of somebody who's, who's been who's in prison. I thought that was pretty good how they meshed that together. It's just you see both sides of a coin, you know, and then it's up to you as the viewer to make a decision on how you feel about both, you know. As far as the villains, I felt James Ramar didn't say very much, but I felt looking at him in this film, he was scary. Like, and I've always, and I feel that the, the villains who talk less and, and just give a look or do action, they're scarier to me as opposed to the ones who just they they just have that effect to where you want to get away from them really fast. You know, you just want to be like, when you're in the presence of them, it's almost like get away if you can, like just try to run. Because just the way the, 
the way they're portrayed in, in the films I've seen, they're they're a lot more menacing when they don't talk. When they, they they do have dialogue, but it's it's more menacing when they don't talk as much. They they are more dangerous. Even the guy that 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 was his um, his bat his uh, I don't want to say backup man, but his 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 other his partner in crime, uh, Billy. He was scary because he didn't talk that much either. You know, they, he just did. And he, this is the same guy that's also a bench this in Predator. I'll give a review for that at some point. But he he was more menacing, I guess you could say, when he didn't talk. So, as far as my rating for the film, I'll give it five out of five. Yes, sir. It's a classic. It's it's one of those films where you can watch today by today's standards and you can say this is how the environment was for um, for San Francisco at the time what it looked like but also what was allowed on screen what what was allowed to be promoted in theaters because it's, it's even though the film is rated R I don't think this film would work today because you would just have too many people criticizing or having a problem even though there's still these type of interactions with people. They may not be cop and convict, or a cop and convict, or, or a prisoner per se, but this language still really does get used. I think people think like, well, if we take it out of the media, if we take it out of uh, out of the theater, that it's it, it's gonna go somewhere. It's not, there's people, there, I've, people still talk this way to each other as friends to some extent, you know? So, if you like Eddie Murphy, I would say watch the film, check it out. I, I wouldn't say, I don't know if I'd say this was like his, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where, I guess you could say it's, he's coming into his own maybe. You know, if, if that's one way to look at it, I, I would just say it, it's just wild. Because it's, you know, the, just the way the film is. It's not a fast paced action film it's just it has its parts but it's more so of, of a drama slash comedy slash action and i would say action at the at the, the last of the, the three elements of what's in the film yeah so you know check it out if you have a chance i i as long as you can get past the language, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Now, if you are easily offended by, and I don't mean curse words, I mean more vulgar, vul vulgarities. I'm not, I'm go we're going past cuss words if you get what I'm saying, read between the lines. If you're comfortable with, with having um, seen, hear that, then I think you'll be fine. You can sit through it. Of course, it's not a film for kids. This is not a film where, hey, let's all sit down and watch a family film. Like, no. So anyway, with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.